Parts of this episode of Garden Time were recorded before COVID-19 and social distancing requirements. Judy, it's time to get to work. Ryan, I am working. I'm keeping an eye on my garden. And we have something for you to keep an eye on, a new episode of Garden Time. Welcome to Garden Time. Judy, you're right, this is a lot of hard work, <laughs> but this is the payoff for all the hard work we did this spring. And coming up in the show today, we'll be talking about long blooming clematis. We'll also talk about dahlia smut and what you can do about it. But coming up first, a visit to Lansu Chinese Garden. I'm standing here with Justin. We're out the Lansu Chinese Gardens and we are in the courtyard of tranquility and it is a very tranquil place in here, Justin. And there are some amazing fragrances and flowers and different unique things that you look at when you walk in. You know, for instance, um, bonsai? Uh, so mm -hmm. many people would call this a bonsai, which is a Japanese aesthetic, but this is a, a Chinese uh, predecessor to that known as Panjing. And Panjing predates bonsai by at least a thousand years. Oh, wow. And it was brought to Japan later where they developed a different aesthetic. But uh, this particular juniper was uh, is part of the collection of the Kyodai uh, brothers collection, um, and they they're uh, brothers in Southeast Portland, so they kindly uh, let us borrow uh, some of their plants. And this juniper gives you a feeling of being up in the mountains. Uh, this it looks like it's part dead, and it, it's it's a right. more of a literal representation of nature than you would see in bonsai. Interesting. You know, and there's also a lot of fragrance and flowering going on right now. Like yes. for instance, you know, the gardenias and are in full bloom and you know very fragrant when you walk in. Uh, gardenia is a very important plant in a Chinese garden. Um, fragrance is very important in a Chinese garden. One of the uh, important elements they've been uh, in Chinese horticulture and ornamental horticulture. They've been growing gardenias for at least the last fifteen to seventeen hundred years that we oh, wow. know of. And um, and having uh, fragrance throughout the garden is very important, especially in the summer. And then, you know, we walked by a pomegranate on the way in, too, and there's, there's some symbolism with the pomegranate throughout the gardens, right? Uh, yeah, so the pomegranate uh, represents having plenty or bountiful, uh, as represented by many seeds right. in a pomegranate. Um, and we have uh, two pomegranates in the garden, one that's flowering and has some fruit on it developing right now. And then there are some like little statues up on the on the ceilings you were point, pointing out. Yes, actually, uh, so the uh, plant material is uh, oftentimes represented in the architecture and other elements of the garden as well. So we, uh, on the, the gable of the roof of our uh, pavilion right. here, we have there. a pomegranate represented as well. Very cool. And then you also were saying that the lotus are blooming. The lotus are blooming, yes. They're an icon iconic symbol of the summer. Gotcha. So let's go, let's walk over and go take a look at the lotus. Oh. And we're out here in the, you know, the heart of the garden here and out by the pond and the lotus are coming into bloom. And the lotus is a very symbolic flower too for the, in the gardens, right? Indeed. Um, the lotus is an iconic summer, uh, summer symbol uh, for Chinese culture and for the Chinese garden. And uh, they also have a, a representation of sort of attaining perfection or virtue or integrity. Uh, they start out deep in the mud and then they, right. they and then they as they emerge from the water they open up to this perfect flower so it's like uh, buddha attaining that kind of perfection if you will right you know and you by looking at it, you know they're full of buds they're just now starting to open you say there's more and more coming in in all the time to, yes. to fill up the garden so you know if people were to come out to the gardens you guys are open you know what, what should they expect or what's the best protocols for them to come visit uh, so if they start online uh, right. you can we have a, a, a timed entry and we're open from uh, 10 to 5 and uh, we welcome guests. They can stay for about an hour. Right. Uh, they can enjoy the tea house. We have a to-go walk-up window where you can have some tea and some snacks. Okay. Um, and uh, so you can still enjoy the garden. It's just a little bit different. We have a one-way system for, uh, for visitors to walk okay. um, and enjoy the garden, but uh, it's, it's uh, pretty much the same garden, uh, but just a little bit uh, restrained or, or uh, limited as far as 
uh, what direction you can walk. Right. So the best yeah. thing, you know, go go to the website, you know, make make an appointment to to walk in. You know, you'll get all the information as far as you know protocols throughout the garden. You know, as those they're changing all the time. But you know, it's just important for people to know. You know, the garden the gardens are open. You know, they're coming into bloom. They're stunning. So Justin, it's been a pleasure to be down here to visit the gardens and ha have this tour. They look great. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Ryan. Garden Time is brought to you by Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. Do you want to be green? Do the easy stuff first. Hi, I'm Sarah from Portland Nursery. The U.S. House Energy and Commerce Committee says for every dollar spent on a shade tree, you can save $5 on cooling, blocking the penetrating heat in the summer and allowing the warm rays through in the winter. Dollar for dollar, there's no better energy and money saver than a good deciduous shade tree. Portland Nursery's professionals can help you make the perfect selection. Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. The fields are open. Come see the dahlias blooming at Swan Island Dahlias in Canby. The annual festival has been canceled, but you don't have to wait until the end of August to enjoy all the color. Safely walk the almost 40 acres of blooms. Pick up some cut flowers and visit our gift shop. Place an order for Dahlia Tubers online and receive 10% off your order through September. We're open six days a week through the end of September. Swan Island Dahlia is America's leading Dahlia grower, located just off I-5 in Candy. I'm at Lusher Farm today at the Rogerson Clematis Garden with Linda Butler, the curator. And so it's midsummer, and there are so many clematis blooming. So, but today we're going to talk about long blooming clematis. We get a lot of questions about which clematis bloom for the longest period of time without a break. And so we're standing underneath Polish Spirit, which is always the first one I mention. So we actually have two plants here with supports, they're on either side of, a, of an old apple tree, and so we don't want to completely burden the apple tree. <laughs> uh, and this has been in bloom for over a month already. Wow. And if you go to our website, rogersonclematiscollection.org, if you go under visit, we have a what's in bloom feature that we update every week. And so you can sort of count along how many weeks as you visit that the same ones are still in bloom. Wow. That's, that's a good way to see. Definitely. Yeah. And on the other side of this really antique old um, apple tree, there's another one. Which was that? Yeah, that's a little white one called Anita. And it's in that Tangutica orientalis group that you usually think of as being white, but an, or as yellow. And Anita is white. And she's been in bloom since late May, and we're now in late July. Wow and there's more buds, she's still going. Ah, and we have some other up the way a little bit, so let's go over there. Yeah, okay. Linda, this is so beautiful in this obelisk, which is this? This is Gypsy Queen, and she's an old timer, a daughter of Clematis Jackmanai, beautiful purple, and you can see she had a few precocious flowers very early. Uh, she sent a branch over here, and people have <laughs> said, oh, she's blooming short. Well. She came up to <laughs> four and a half feet tall. That's another three feet over into the drymies. So um, she's still going. But the big show now is up at the top. Mm -hmm. And there's more buds up there. That'll go for another couple of weeks. So this branch peaked about two weeks ago. And just as the rest of this was coming into bloom. And it's so, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, you really don't have to do anything. It just does it on its own. It just kind of keeps going. Right. We didn't, we, you know, we didn't deadhead those off of there, and it still came up and rebloomed. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And we have another one? Yes. Let's look at a different color than purple. All right. <laughs> Linda, this is such a beautiful bed. It's not just the clematis. It's all the companion plants, too. Right. And we have, this is Crispina. It's a Polish variety, so you say it like Christina, only you say Crispina with a P. And it's gone into the Roseanne geranium, which looks so great with your shirt. Um, we have limelight hydrangea with it. And then I'll step out of the way here to see the uh, O. Henry seed strain lilies that it, it also is growing into. So we haven't given it a structure 
because we know it's a great partner. Mm. And this is another one. You can see the deadheads on it. It has been in bloom. And even without deadheading, it keeps on blooming. This is really a great plant. Uh. And we do happen to have this for sale. Oh, Nice little segue there. <laughs> um, all of our sales benefit the garden. We are not a garden center, we're a botanic garden, but we do have to sell plants to support the garden and every dime goes back into the garden. So shopping, if you wanna come, the garden is open nice. and shopping is open on Fridays and Sundays only from 10 until two, 10 in the morning till two in the afternoon. And if you're shopping in person, when you go into where the sales plants are, we will ask you to wear a mask. Great, okay. And if you wanna do safe shopping, if you wanna order online and come and pick up your plants, then, well, uh, for any kind of shopping, and to find out what we have available, you can go to rogersandclematuscollection.org, clematis shopping. Excellent. Well, you have all that information. And really, if you need any questions answered, there's so many knowledgeable people here. Come and see this beautiful garden. Get out of the house and enjoy. So please go to gardentime.tv and you can click over to their website and find out how you can get here. Thank you so much. It's been lovely. Thank you, Judy. Garden Time's Incredible Edibles. With more people planting gardens and you know tomatoes being a real popular plant to have in the garden, you know there are some care tips that you can do to kind of increase your productivity on your tomato and help them ripen a little bit. And one of those is to do some pruning on your tomato plants. So we've gone through down here and we've cut off some of these kind of, you get a lot of these little shoots that we can just cut off. Because on here there's no flowers and there's not going to be any fruit. So by eliminating some of these extra foliage that's down in here, it's promoting more of the energy to go into the actual fruit production and it also allows the lighting to get back in here so you get the sun so you can get a little bit earlier ripening. So a couple different types of tomatoes you'll, you'll hear determinate varieties and indeterminate varieties. Determinate tomatoes are ones that will get grow up to a certain size, set all their fruit at once and come on and done. Um, those tend to not need to be pruned as much as an indeterminate variety. An indeterminate is one that will continue to grow, continue to flower, and continue to fruit throughout the season. So as it continues to grow and gets bigger, that's more when you'll want to do some of the pruning. So by doing a little bit of pruning on your plants to open them up, allows for more sunlight, allows the energy to go back into fruit production, and that's a good thing to do with our tomatoes. Garden Time is brought to you by Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway. So for the parts of your life that just can't stop, it's essential to keep moving forward safely. And now it's easier than ever to own a brand new Subaru from Capital. Not only can you shop hundreds of Subarus online and get questions answered instantly, but now you can test drive, finance, and even complete your purchase all from the comfort of your home. So keep planning for the future. We'll be here to help make the road ahead just a little bit smoother. Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway. Enjoy a summer of art and color. Visit the Oregon Garden for Art in the Garden now through the end of September. See outstanding and inspired art that represents both traditional and modern styles, carefully placed throughout the garden. See the combination of beautiful plants and great art as you stroll the gardens. Just pick up your map at the Visitor's Center on your next visit. For details, go to OregonGarden.org. Art in the Garden is presented by Capital Subaru. Well, it is so exciting to be with Renee Shepard from Renee's Garden. And so she is in California, but we're talking to her over Zoom. And so Renee, thank you so much for coming on with us this morning. Well, thanks, it's a pleasure. So, you know, it's been a crazy year. Everybody's been locked down, separated from family and friends and work, and everybody's vegetable gardening, herb gardening, any kind of gardening. And so it's that time of the year, it's mid-summer. So really it's exciting that we can plant now for a fall garden. What's your thoughts on that? Well, that's true. Actually, the fall garden can be the most successful one because the soil's nice and warm. 
things stay for a longer time when they're ready because you're not they're not getting done really fast there's less pest and disease problems so it's a perfect time to enjoy a lot of good things from the garden planting say mid to late august and early september things that can grow quickly and don't mind the cold coming on uh, so maybe just give us a couple ideas of what what would be the good ones to do especially for beginners we have a lot of beginner vegetable gardeners and a lot of veterans too well, one thing I, I just want to say before I launch into things to grow is that is a um, advertisement to read the packet backs. I know it's easy to just get a packet and sow the seeds, but um, we trial grow everything we sell and we write the instructions based on our own gardening experience. So if you follow the packet di directions, you'll probably have a lot better luck. So having said that, for fall gardening, greens are one of the best things. So chard kale, spinach, collards, they're all really successful for fall gardening. And also planting a salad garden is perfect so that you can have really fresh, go out in the garden and have a fresh salad ready to go. Not only lettuces, um, but also the spicier greens like arugula, and then herbs like cilantro, arugula, chives, parsley, all can be planted late summer for fall harvest. And, of course, root vegetables. You can plant more carrots and beets, turnips, all, you, all of which you can enjoy young. Or the root vegetables can stay in the ground to be harvested through the winter as you want them. And that really it keeps them, um, it really keeps them nicely in the ground. And they get sweeter as it gets cooler, doesn't it? That's true. Uh, frost actually improves the flavor of a lot of root vegetables and also some of the greens like kale gets sweeter the colder it gets. You know that is really good I'm getting hungry <laughs> just thinking about that and I think that sometimes it's the forgotten season for vegetable gardens um, you know everybody's so excited about tomatoes but to to add that season I think is so important and in these days I think it's fun to experiment with it. Well, there's not only that, but if you're looking to have a kind of healthier lifestyle, then the things you can plant in fall are usually some of the healthiest vegetables and the most colorful. So you can really, really boost your nutrition without too much effort. You know, at, um, at your seed packets, um, you can get them at independent garden stores or online. And it's so exciting, too, that you are a cook or a chef and you actually make up recipes from your trial gardens. Well, you know, we grow everything we sell first to uh, um, be able to write very clear growing instructions. And then we have all the harvest. So as I was saying to you earlier when we were talking, uh, I know two or three ways I make green beans. But if I have a huge harvest, I'm going to need some new ideas. So we do develop recipes. And then I have three cookbooks that are organized by vegetables. So if you have too much broccoli or too many mustard greens, you'll have some ideas. So. Yeah, and when you have a lot of produce, it's fun to try. You have what you need to try new things without much risk. Right, and you know, also, you don't have just things that every other seed company has. You have some unique things like saffron crocus bulbs, which sounds amazing. Well, saffron crocus bulbs, they're little bulbs about an inch big, and you plant them in September, and then depending on your climate area in about six to eight weeks they come above the ground with little flowers and then you can use your fingers or a tweezer to, to pluck out the stigmas, the threads and each flower gives you a thread. First year each bulb will make three flowers and then over time they increase. So it's really a fun project and the saffron you harvest yourself is really really potent and then what's interesting is then first the flowers come then the leaves and then in the summer the whole thing goes dormant and you don't even know they're there so it's a reverse cycle to what you what you think but it's a lot of fun to try oh man that just sounds like a lot of fun so if you're interested in any of renee's seeds you can go to gardentime.tv we'll click you over to their website she has a newsletter with recipes she's got instagram facebook all kinds of information and also you can get those saffron crocus bulbs to plant this fall renee it's been so much fun talking with you thank you so much for all you do well thank you very much it's a pleasure to talk to you Well, here it is, August. We're out at Swan Eye Adalia's. Heather, today we're talking smut.
We are talking smut. <laughs> and maybe not the smut you might be thinking of, but dahlia smut. Yes. And so this would be an example of what dahlia smut is. So yeah, what, what are we, we looking at here? This is unique in that this year we had an extreme case of dahlia smut kind of running between our fields and people's yards. We heard a lot about it. And it was the wet, moist June we had. Semi-warm right. temperatures and a lot of extra rain and moisture. It just seemed like they brought the fungus on very quickly. Right, and that's what we're kind of looking at here with these kind of these browning spots yes. on that. So that, that's a fungus that just because of the weathers. Just because of the weather, yeah, the spores were able to thrive. Um, they really just, you need to pick off the worst okay. leaves, but you also need to spray your entire plant with a fungicide, something that okay. can kill those spores. They are in the soil, so you kind of want to spray around your plant and on the plant, okay. up and down, but get the worst of the leaves. You don't have to pick all the leaves off, but we want you to try and get it from right. continuing Because to it spread. is going to spread from, from yeah. new leaves, so even if a new leaf comes out, you know, this will spread on right, eventually onto continue. that new leaf. Yep, so we want to try and stop it. Okay, so you know, picking these off, get a good a good spray on there. And once you pick these leaves off, what should you do with these? They need to go in your garbage, not your compost pile, because you don't want to continue to spread that or have right. it go to the larger compost piles and spread back into your soil. So we really want you to dispose those in the trash. Bag them up, throw them in the trash, yep. let it go go in the landfill Get so rid it of doesn't, them. doesn't spread. Yes. And then, you know, are there other kind of things we need to look for on the on the dahlias as far as other, other pest or disease issues? You know, the biggest culprit or biggest pest to dahlias is spider mites. They thrive in heat and and it makes it look like you're not watering enough. So they start drying out your plant from the bottom up. Your leaves start getting drier or browner okay. and they kind of just slowly work their way up and the leaves continue to dry out and people think it's not, they're not watering. Spider mites love the heat and the moisture. So the more you water and the hotter our temperatures are, they thrive. So they're really picky in that you have okay. to find something that specifically treats spider mites. Some of your general all-purpose sprays will not cover them and it's really important to stop that early before right. they take over and dry out. So you can go to a lot of your, your local garden centers yeah. and you'll, you can ask them and they'll, yeah. they'll have a product. That right and there are organic methods that. or non-organic but you definitely want to find something that specifically treats them. You know and then you guys you know typically have a festival coming up at the end, end of August. We typically do. This is the first time in over 70 years. It's never been canceled to our knowledge and um, it is canceled this season and that's because of COVID-19 with the restrictions on right. how many people we can have here. But since we can't have festival, we have two months, August through September for you to come visit. Right. So, so you, know, you can be out here like the display gardens, yeah. they're, they're stunning. You know, the fields are in full color. So you're still open and people can come out yep. and wander, wander the display gardens, wander the fields. You, know, yes. you can come in and get cut flowers and, yes. and even order, see what they like and order them for later, right? Correct. Yeah. So. And so, you know, for more information on this, you know, the best place to go go to would be your, your website and Facebook. Is that right? That is the best place. We'll keep everything updated. So website is dahlias.com or you can follow us on social media. You know, so for more information on, you know, care for your dahlias, you can definitely go to Swan Island's website or you can go to gardentime.tv and we'll click you. So Heather, it's been a pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Welcome to Blooming Junction, where it's easy to connect with nature. At Blooming Junction, you'll find beautiful, healthy plants, good, fresh food, and a place to regain peace and calm in your life. We have an unsurpassed collection of unique and distinctive plants and the expertise to help any gardener be successful. And we feature Blooming Advantage plants. Come check out Blooming Junction for an inspiring experience in the garden or in the kitchen. Blooming Junction, offering quality plants for beautiful gardens. Well, I'm out here at Terra Casa with Diana. Diana, we were out here earlier this year and looked at these amazing things, and you've really exploded after all this pandemic stuff. We so. have. A lot of people have decided to put water features in their backyards, and it's been amazing. We've had a great spring, yes. Yeah, you know, and everybody's staying home. You know, they yes. have more time in their yes. gardens that it's, and you have such an amazing selection out here. Yeah, so what we do is we take any of the pots that we sell in the lot as a, as a planter, right. and we turn it into a custom water feature for you. So um, you have your choice of anything in our pot lot, and then we, we custom build all the components and everything, and then you get that wonderful soothing sound of water in your backyard. Right, because you know, everybody's got a different style in their yes, yard. So exactly. it's you know, anywhere from you know, the bright colors of the pottery, which you have a, you know, this huge selection of, 
on down to like you know the traditional bird bath look, right? exactly and the concrete ones do are right. doing really well too so a lot of people are taking care of their birds and i i love that a lot of people are enjoying more time with their homes and they're making their home their sanctuary and um taking the time to invest in in something they want to be in all day long right you know they've been planting you know the trees and the shrubs and putting exactly. in the gardens but it's this extra little goodies right. that kind of really right. is that that topper on the yes, cake, right? Yes, it is icing on the cake for sure. Right, yes. you know, the, with, with the coloring and then just the sound of, of water right, in the garden. Right, and nice. we have quite a few fountains that make a lot of sound, and then we have other ones that are more serene, a little more soothing, so you can kind of choose. We help you with that uh, adjustment and everything okay. on the bubbler itself, so you tell us what you're looking for and we'll make it for you. Right, so you have, you know, the pre-done ones that they can come in and take home themselves, yes. but then you know, you're customizing them and you're de delivering and setting up too, Yes, right? and we deliver and we set up, and then we have a whole uh, maintenance program as well okay. so if you need us to come out a couple times a year to take them down for the winter and then again set them up for spring we do that as well right so you know we customize them to being in your yard or just a little you know you have some cute little ones that are little bubblers oh, that you just so set adorable. on your patio and super plug it easy in, right? yeah, and a lot of people want the super easy it's a take it put some water in it and plug it in and go now, Diana, I see a lot of water flowing, but I don't see like big reservoirs of water around. So. No, so we have different kinds of reservoirs. We have square reservoirs, okay. we have round reservoirs, um, and the size of the reservoir depends on the size of the pot you choose for okay. the top, or pots. You can have multiple. We have one where we have a, a series of three, a, a stair-step okay. uh, version. So that, that will determine, but then that's something that you either bury in the ground, or you can put above ground and build a little um, wall around it. So they don't necessarily need to have a water supply coming in. It's just no, a big reservoir no. that holds that water and just recirculates Exactly, it. exactly. Now you have the, this amazing selection. You have one of the largest selections of pots and containers out here that can be turned into fountains. So you know, let's head over and see this large selection. That you okay. Have. Now with this great selection of pottery that you have in here that you can turn it into a fountain, but it doesn't have to be. You can also use them on the deck or the patio too, right? Exactly. So we have a huge selection of pots. Um, I carry mostly ceramic pots okay. because they're high fired, they're frost proof, freeze proof, and they are not porous like concrete or terracotta, right. which absorb the moisture. And then when we get a freeze, they crack over the winter time. So we have all different shapes and sizes and colors, and then some natural finishes as well in the pots. And there, you can take these and put them inside your home as well. And right. there's a lot of different I mean, things you, you can you're do. You're decorating, like you you're would inside your house, you're exactly. decorating out, outside in your yard exactly. too. Exactly. So you can color coordinate, you know, and match, you know, with a huge range of colors and shapes and sizes. You can have the fountain and have the coordinating right. pots to go out on the patio. Right. So, you know, so for an amazing selection of pots and containers and fountains, you know, your crew can come out and basically take care of everything you need for exactly. your out outdoor yes. decorating, you know, so come on out to Terracosta and meet with Diana. It's been a pleasure. Thank and you. We appreciate being out here with you. Thank you. Thank you for watching today, and we highly recommend you take the time to enjoy your garden. And for more information on today's show or any of our other episodes, go to Gardentime.tv. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week on Garden Time. Parts of this episode of Garden Time were recorded before COVID-19 and social distancing requirements. The proceeding was a paid program of the Gustin Creative Group and its sponsors.